Howdy of you delicious people. I'm here today to review a current Netflix movie called Aftermath. So I watched this film and I was like, like, should I rewatch this film? <laughs> like there was a lot of times for me where there was a lot of like moving parts in this movie where I was just like, they just keep like dropping like things in like j just to like prolong this story and you just see these like random things dropping and then you're just like what the heck is this uh the whole time i'm kind of i was kind of either left in confusion or i was like i was starting to get a headache while watching this movie in all honesty like it gets where we just have like this two couple go into this house and it basically ruins their life it makes them just like either like bad crap crazy or it just <clears throat> eventually makes them either suspicious whether or not there's an actual uh, like guy doing something in their home or maybe it's a ghost. But it never seems to quite have them go to that consensus like they never go and have a shaman come to the house and like this house is clear like. There is never that moment, but like, dude, I would have just been like, man, maybe it's a ghost. Maybe it's clearly a ghost. Maybe we should hire like a paranormal investigator to just kind of like see if we can like clean up this home, like spiritually. Maybe there's some ghosts in the, the whatever, but like, so the whole entire movie, you're just kind of like, is this a ghost? But is this an actual person? Like, uh, like you're kind of racking your brain, trying to figure out, put the pieces together. But they just keep dropping things that all of a sudden now we have to go into like a prolonged story because there's like flowers being dropped. There's like, uh, like, uh, like adult magazines being dropped. And so like we start having both Kevin and Natalie that are just like having to deal with whatever, how, whatever, uh, this house brings them next, getting to the point where Natalie seems to be going crazy and Kevin is to eventually start to get very, very sick. And so, yeah, like, so I kind of wonder if, like, this was the plan the whole time to just make this house, like, deserted or to eventually just try to buy the house back, but, like, from previous owners or whatever, but it was just like, there were so many things, like so many moving parts going on here. And like so much story that we had to like comb through through this entire movie. I was just left with just utter, just like, man, uh, like, <laughs> am I going to be able to review this movie? I, I thought this would just be a simple, fun movie, but then I ended up finding out that they're like, they're dropping so many things here. And I'm just like, I don't know if I can keep track of all this. And plus also like, like I didn't like, I didn't exactly like note every single little detail or whatever for this one. Like I just came in here to start watching this movie. So, um, so yeah, with that said, we're going to get that kind of a review where it's just going to go off of memory and how like we, Here's the thing. So we also have like a person who ends up going missing during this film and nobody gives a rip to like figure out where this woman is. And I was like, that kind of bothers the crap out of me too. Like no one is to like question where this person is. Like she's been gone for X amount of days, but no one has a care in the world until like the very end of this movie. Uh, but yeah, so... Here's the thing also, it kind of seems weird that Kevin was to, like, it seems like his relationship isn't exactly smooth sailing, but Kevin decides to go and buy a house. That seems like a huge commitment for a relationship that seems to be on the rocks. Like, I guess, like, Kevin tries to say that they need a new change of pace, but buying a home doesn't seem like one of them. <laughs> like, a way to just, like, get that new kind of, like, change of, like, what? it's just weird. 
like there's so much about it where I was just like, okay, like shouldn't you even like pull back more to just be like, well, maybe we should be seeing less of one another and then maybe the heart will grow fonder, like maybe that kind of thing. But um, I don't know, like trying to make a bigger like commitment with this relationship, it just seemed just like, I don't know, like I just felt that they were biting off more than they could probably chew and they just kept on chewing anyways. I don't know with this with this whole deal. So uh but yeah so going on into this let's go into just spoilers about this movie uh the best that i can because man is there just a lot of moving parts in this in this movie it was just like we found out there was like cheating going on and we found out that there was like uh like dead relatives going on and like it's a whole ordeal in this film where it's just like god there's so many moving parts why does this movie have to be, like, all over the goddamn place? Good God, movie. Like, settle down. <laughs> Control yourself. <laughs> That's what I want to say for this film. Control yourself. Good God. So, let's go into it. Let's go into spoiler time. Spoiler time. It's about that target to spoil this movie. Uh, I felt like the guy from, uh, God, what was it? Uh, Robocop 2. Uh, control yourselves! <laughs> so let's get into it. So, it seems that, uh, we find out that Kevin is to be a guy who ends up cleaning up after crime scenes. Um, if you hear any kind of thunder in the background, there's bad weather going on. Uh, so you might hear any kind of rumbles or whatever. It's lightning, believe me. Uh, trust me. Go with me on it. Because I can't help but... I have to record and thunder is going on. So, uh, Kevin is to clean up after crime scenes. And so it's, uh, what eventually ends up happening is there seems to be this, uh, this family or this couple, I'm not quite sure exactly which, and they are to sell off their home because of course someone had died in it. And so they're like, dude, we just want to like, we're just going to get out of here. Like this, like, there's a whole, I think, suicidal, uh, or no, wait, there's a whole, like, death, and I believe, like, suicide that ended up happening there, or maybe it was something like that, where it was, like, a murder case, whichever, uh, but the people decided to sell their home. So, it seems that Kevin is kind of interested in wanting to eventually buy the house, just because it's just like, well, hey, like, we're probably never gonna get this kind of deal, um... And plus, like, Kevin knows the history of the home, considering he had to clean it. And so, uh, so what is happening with Natalie and Kevin in this movie? So, Natalie is to be, uh, like, kind of a fashion designer that I guess is kind of, like, a, a kind of small rung of things where she's kind of selling to certain kind of people and eventually, like, her fashion designing thing starts to take off when one mother is just like, hey, like, we have this girl who is to be uh, Anne Levin, who is to basically ask for, uh, for really Natalie to just be like, you know what, like, you really need to, like, sell these things. You need to start giving up samples and start, like, uh, really uh, just start, like, going and doing this job really but here's the thing so natalie goes and easily takes this job but we find out that natalie this technical job is to be tied to a former uh lover some guy named nick and we end up finding out that uh kevin and Natalie had a relationship problem, which they're going to therapy to try to mow over this. Because what ended up happening was Kevin, sadly enough, had his brother, like, hang himself. And so, Kevin was kind of shot off, or, like, kind of, like, just, just 
uh like shut up that that's a horrible word uh shut out shut shut down like he basically just like distanced himself from everything when that happened and so natalie who all of a sudden wasn't getting uh the love that i guess that she needed from kevin eventually decided to have an affair with a guy named nick and evidently uh I guess maybe Kevin walked in on uh, Kevin and or, or Kevin walked in on Natalie and Nick having an affair, I guess, maybe giving a BJ or whichever. And so that is when their like relationship, of course, took a very hard turn where like Kevin was still willing to be with Natalie and like really like. Like, I guess that took a moment for Kevin to realize that he just, I guess, wasn't really being there for Natalie. And so that led Kevin to really, like, try to get back in the relationship more. And so, but also just Kevin just still just does not trust Natalie. Like, he uh, has points where he kind of has to question a lot of what Natalie does. <laughs> Uh, just because I guess, like, uh, I guess an affair could lead to, like, hey, maybe she's crazy, and maybe she's gonna try to poison me, and maybe I'm probably gonna die because of her. <laughs> but so, uh, but eventually, it's, like, one little, like, small build of things. All of a sudden, Kevin is to eventually have some adult magazines being sent uh, to their home. And it's supposedly, like, coming from Kevin, and it has his address, and it has everything. Like, everything is perfectly right. And supposedly Kevin hadn't ordered these magazines, and so Natalie is kind of joking with him to just be like, Oh, well, yeah, like, you go and enjoy your, like, adult stuff or whatever. It's like, Kevin's like, it's not mine. And so, and so we just continue to, to play at this thread. And so, uh, all of a sudden we eventually have Danny who's kind of watching over the house, uh, who I believe is Natalie's sister. And all of a sudden, we start to, like, have this dog in this movie who is starting to get really, really sick to the point of him needing to forcibly get put down because supposedly he must have digested something that didn't sit well with him, sadly enough, in this freaking film. Like, if we don't have enough to just juggle around with in this film. So, uh, Danny is to eventually, like, start watching this house, and all of a sudden, like, she's starting to see, like, sinks being turned on and like noises would be had like banging noises and so she's starting to run around the house and eventually she hides in this closet and all of a sudden uh like she ends up getting grabbed uh and sucked uh in through this closet and then we're like oh so it must be a ghost then because obviously it kind of feels like there's a lot of times where there's just uh music being turned on and we have a spot where Natalie's getting out of the shower where it says, hi, beautiful. And Natalie's asking Kevin, it's like, well, hey, like, thanks for the note. And Kevin's like, what note? Uh, consistently, we're just having, like, these things, like, I think consistently trying to tear this couple apart. We have roses that were supposedly sent from Nick and had Nick's signature on it. And so that all of a sudden leads to Kevin just going like, hey, why is Nick like sending flowers to you? And so Natalie is to finally have to mention to Kevin that Nick had put forth uh, like money for Natalie to do this job. And so Natalie is technically working for Nick. And Kevin is just like, how could you work for this man? It's like, so like, is this going to end up where he's going to try to seduce you and get, uh, get you back into his arms and then you're just going to leave me kind of thing. And so Natalie's like, well, it's not like that. And like, it, we're just going to work and that's it. It's like, Kevin is like, I, I don't know about that. I don't know. So 
we just have this couple that is having to go through therapy and just really having to like, and so <clears throat> Kevin decides that he's just going to go back to school. Like if he doesn't have enough to juggle with relationship problems, Kevin is just going to go back into school and, uh, cause like his job probably pays well, but like, uh, but so him and two other guys are just kind of cleaning up these murderers houses and it just looks kind of like it's cool but it's also really weird so kevin is eventually going back to school and all of a sudden he is to team up uh with this girl and i think her name is avery uh yeah so eventually like Kevin is not at all thinking of this woman to have, like, an affair, but we have his, like, co-workers that are saying, like, well, how hot is she? Like, man, like, so are you going to get a little, like, slice off to this? And Kevin's like, no. Like, it's just school and that's it. Like, and there's never a moment where Kevin is to, like, even, like, it doesn't seem like this girl is throwing herself at him. And eventually he just gets to the point where, like, Avery does know about Kevin's, like, girlfriend. And, like, so, like, she, like, knows about, like, she knows about Kevin and, like, and, but so they're good friends. So, uh, so eventually they have to, so eventually we just, like, continue to, Having Natalie so curious about this home because she used to supposedly have a dream or something while she's by herself, where all of a sudden we have this like hand coming into like the the uh, this hallway of this door, and it's all of a sudden to like move this hand, and so like Natalie freaked out about that like like they consistently like call whoever. And are consistently mentioning that there's someone in their house. There's someone in their house. Even to the point of them desperately. Even though they start to run out of money. They're like, well, we need an obvious camera system here. To just, like, protect us. And so that way, if someone does come through this house, we'll eventually spot it. But here's the goofy thing. Even when they're to have a camera system, it doesn't seem like they can catch anything. Which is just kind of weird to me. So that's when, you, that's when we're kind of assuming... That it could probably be a ghost at this point. So either that or whoever is to have this camera system or if it's an actual person just knows where the camera is. I would assess or assume. So going into this movie, uh, uh, eventually it just starts to break down that Natalie is uh, to seemingly almost get attacked by some random guy. And, like, this guy has to say, it's like, oh, well, like, you are really beautiful and everything like that. And so, like, Natalie is just getting freaking, like, taken down by this guy to the point of her, like, stabbing this guy in the back with this thing of scissors. Weirdly enough, every time Natalie used to try to take somebody down, it's with some scissors. I don't know what it is with her in this, like, does she have plenty of the scissors in her home? Like, what is the thing that she has to take people down with scissors in this movie? So, <clears throat> we find out that, uh, like, after all of this stuff that leads up, because eventually Kevin is starting to barf and get sick during his job, and so everybody's like, oh, like, I guess you are kind of like, uh, like, I guess eventually there was going to be a point in time when, like, somebody's going to be barfing here. And Kevin is just like, I don't think that that's that at all. Like, I think I'm, I think I just ate something. So eventually both Kevin and Natalie are together. And all of a sudden we just start seeing, like, Kevin who is to just start dropping on the ground. And Natalie's like, oh, my God, call someone. All of a sudden, we find out that supposedly Kevin has been getting poisoned with all the crap that they're having to deal with and all the stuff that is being, like, done. Like, Kevin is starting to get poisoned uh, by some drug. 
And so now they're accusing Natalie of like drugging Kevin and Natalie's like, no, like I'm not drugging him. So like, it just gets to the point where I'm just like, oh, okay. So that must be the same drug that the dog had been in bit on and they just couldn't find it, but they could find it in Kevin's system, I guess. So it starts to lead where Kevin is just not eating any of the lunches that Natalie used to prepare for him. And Natalie's just, what, what are you doing? Like, why aren't you eating in the food? And Kevin is just grabbing a banana and he's like, I'm, I'm just going to go. Like, I'm just, like, I'm just going to, like, yeah, he doesn't want to get poisoned again and freaking get killed uh, by, uh, by this food. Maybe it's not Natalie, but it's something else. So this keeps escalating and escalating. And so eventually Natalie is to be home alone and all of a sudden there is this very tall figure that is to like start getting going through the home to where eventually like Natalie is having to get onto her balcony because this thing just whatever this thing is just wants to come and get her so she jumps off her balcony and smacks into the pool and so they end up calling the house again and because Natalie could not like get out of the room that she was in because there was like a bookcase or something in front of her door. So Natalie just goes and jumps into the, the pool. And so we end up having the detective who's offer officer Richardson, who ends up going and pulling Kevin aside and shows uh, Kevin the clip on how there was no person in this camera that Natalie was supposed to be attacked by. And so it's like, whoa, so this must be a ghost then. Or Natalie's just losing her mind to where Kevin is just kind of asking Natalie about her medication and it has she been taking it or whatever. And so like we just like, man, there's so much just mistrust here. But eventually what ends up happening is that once Natalie is to kill the guy with the scissors, this guy is to, like, kind of confess that he had went online to some, uh, like, chat room or some, some, some kind of something on the internet where there was a thing on the internet being, like, taken to, like, an ad mentioning that Natalie wanted to have a like surprise guest at her home that likes it rough or something like that. And so Natalie is like, oh my God, like somebody like took an ad out to like, somebody's just freaking desperate to tear this couple apart and like desperate to get these people out of this home. And so uh, the officer is to retrace where this ad's origin was, and supposedly it had been coming from a guy named Robert, who uh, was the original owner of Natalie and Kevin's home. Uh, because Robert wanted to eventually, like, he was very upset that it felt like both Natalie and Kevin like stole this house from under them. Like, I think Robert mentions to both Kevin or like Robert mentions to Natalie. It's like, man, you really stole this home from us. Like it was a free meal to you. And because when Natalie is investigating like the previous murder that happened in this home, she ends up talking to, uh, like the the wife of the pre previous home and supposedly the person who had killed in there it wouldn't seem like this person would be a murderer that like none of this would have actually happened like it just seems kind of weird so all of a sudden what eventually ends up happening is robert ends up getting arrested because surefire enough like Robert is to have supposedly caused a lot of this grief and maybe even caused like any number of other things. So like both Natalie and Kevin are thinking everything is like perfectly like 
hey man, like that was it. Like it had to be Robert. It had to be that one guy. So they thought they were in the clear. They thought everything, all of this was going to be over, that eventually they can just move on from this. And so, but Natalie is to ask Kevin, it's like, you know what, like, you know what, Kevin, like, I don't think you trust me. So I think that we should just like, we should just finally just separate. Like Natalie at one point is to want to go to a hotel and Kevin is like, what hotel? Like all of our credit cards are maxed up. Like the mortgage is coming up. Like there's nowhere to go. Like we have no money to go anywhere. Like we're stuck here. Like we have to deal with whatever we have to deal with here. So Uh, so now we push on. So, uh, Natalie is to go on and have a bath for herself. Like, but she's starting to just kind of hear things, but she kind of just kind of puts it away. It's like, meh. like there is consistent times where there's adjustments being done to the like thermostat where every single time. There's to be like the thermostat set for like 30 degrees. And so every time both Natalie and Kevin has to consistently adjust it in the middle of the night to be 70. Because it's like a rational, but we see the dial. We actually see the number consistently being adjusted. I'm like, well, that's like the perfect thing that we have to see the actual number in a big fat screen of things. So that way we can tell that the number is being adjusted like so like so we can tell on screen that somebody is messing consistently so they have to consistently adjust it you would think that both either natalie or kevin would just finally say like like why is this thing consistently getting adjusted like should we bring a repairman in I, that never happens so like why would anybody put it to 30 degrees uh so natalie is going on a bath and so uh, supposedly Natalie to text Kevin that, hey, like, maybe you should just stay out tonight. Like, maybe we should just, like, just not be, like, together. And so Kevin is just like, okay, fine. Like, it just seems like we're just more and more, like, just, like, uh, like, like that this relationship is going to resolve and, like, Kevin, sadly enough, like, I don't mean to say this, but, like, it seems like Kevin has a horse in the stable. <laughs> I know that's awful to say, but, like, it kind of feels like if, like, this relationship does not work out and, like, Kevin could go and be in a relationship with his, like, his, uh, uh, his Avery or whatever this girl's name is. Uh, oh, we also had a moment where uh, Natalie's mother comes to dinner to talk with uh, Farah, Farah, and like it seems that both when Farah and Natalie are just at this dinner, they eventually go into this huge argument. It really just blows up to where like they're finally telling the truth about one another, how like Farah is telling that saying that Natalie is just this like uh like rebellious teen act or something like that and uh and Natalie is saying that Ferrara is still putting up this like free spirit whatever kind of person and like putting that whole thing up and just like so there's this like back and forth which just leads to like both of these people like and, like, Danny was supposed to come to this dinner, but she disappears, of course, because she's probably dead. So, uh, so eventually Natalie is to eventually, like, call Kevin and say, like, hey, I'm sorry about what I said last night, and, like, bop, 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 bop. So... Like, but nothing has come up about the text. Like, as if, like, maybe, like, Natalie said, like, yeah, maybe I was wrong about the text. Maybe you should come back home. Blah, blah, blah. Not, nothing like that. So, 
Kevin is all of a sudden like, I am so confused. <laughs> like, because uh, he's with his, like, his study buddy. Uh, and that's all it's ever going to be. It's just a study buddy. So Kevin is to just be like, well, I just don't understand this woman. <laughs> So eventually Kevin is to call Natalie back and Kevin is just be like, you know what? Like I got your text and Natalie's like, what text? And he's like, well, I can screenshot my like feed to you. And so like Natalie gets the feed and she's like, I didn't send that text. And so Natalie is again, just like, who's in the house with me? <laughs> like, is this a ghost? What is this? And, like, we also know that this is also based on a true story. So, like, if this was based on a true story, how is it all of a sudden at the very end of this that there is, like, a obvious, like, uh, at the very end of this film, there is a door that ends up reclosing? Like, if this is based on true events. Like, so wait a minute. Did they, like, did they find out that there was another person in that house? Like, I'm curious. <laughs> this is based on true events. Or, like, maybe in a roundabout way, it's, like, based on, like, like, a thing. Like, I want to know, like, how is, like, how is it that the way that this ends? Like, the way it does then. Because it, like, it ends with somebody reclosing this door that ended up being opened. So, like, did they just want to just, like, tease that there could be a sequel to this? I don't know. But anyway, so Natalie gets the feed. And so what eventually ends up happening is we finally have like a person that is actually inside the house. We find out that it's not. Um, we find out that it's not a ghost after all. Well, like still, I'm just like, I feel like there's a ghost in this house. Like I can't just buy that it's a person. I just can't. So, uh, what ends up happening is Natalie ends up getting eventually taken, uh, by this giant of a man who is called Otto. He's skinny, but he's very tall. So, we have Otto, who, is, who I guess was in the Rampage movie, the Dwayne Johnson Rampage movie. I guess he was probably, like, the Rampage gorilla, like he was the... Uh, he was the CGI version of that, I guess. So, Otto eventually uh, is to go in and, uh, like, drug this woman and then put her in his own little secret room. And so now, Kevin is to go into his home and has a note left that is to say, like, hey, like, I'm in the tub, join me. Here's the thing, though. Like, is this auto person, is he to be, like, this perfect, like, signature guy? I'm going to have to pause here for a second. Because every single time, like, you would think that, like, something would be sketchy where Kevin is just like, that's not Natalie's handwriting. You would have thought, right? But I guess not. So... Kevin, well, I guess maybe, like, this guy could, like, see the handwriting of any number of notes or whatever that has been left and just kind of, like, mimic the writing, I guess. I guess that could work, right? Uh, so, <clears throat> excuse me. So, eventually, Kevin is to go into the bath and realize how, like, steamy the bath is. And he's just like, okay, so I guess I'll just turn off whatever. And so... Eventually, Kevin is to head into bed with who he thinks is Natalie. And so we have Otto, who is, like, going out of his little secret room. And Natalie is to, like, break her hand uh, to eventually get out of her cuffs and eventually try to call the police and any, any number of things. We also have Otto, who ends up, again, adjusting the thermostat to 30. Like, I guess to really showcase, to make them think that there's there there is a possible ghost uh in this house so 
eventually, Kevin is going to bed to realize that it's actually Danny who's in the bed. He ends up, like, touching her, and he realizes that he has blood on his hands. And so... What ends up happening is Otto sneaks up behind Kevin and is, like, they're having this rustle and tussle over this, like, needle. And so eventually, Kevin gets the needle out of this guy's hands. And so eventually, Natalie is now kind of running through the house. And so, like, Otto is either after Kevin or after Natalie. And eventually, Otto is going after Natalie that is in her little fashion room. And so... All of a sudden, Natalie is trying to run for her scissors to defend herself. And that's when, like, Otto and Natalie are kind of having this, like, fight out. And eventually it leads to Kevin having the needle and poking Otto in the neck. And eventually uh, Natalie, like, stabs Otto a number of times. I'm like, dude, like, shouldn't you be worried about how deep those are going in? Because, like, Kevin is, like, right behind... <laughs> Like, I would be worried that Natalie would stab too far in and all of a sudden accidentally stab Kevin, too. But it's whatever. So, you would have thought at this point from the number of times that these people have called 911 that they would be like the boy that cried wolf at this moment. But still, no. Like, eventually we get where uh, the police come and there's freaking bodies everywhere. And so... After that whole moment, we have, like, Kevin, like, telling Natalie that he loves her and he trusts her and, and like, that they're going to, like, like, that this is probably cemented now that, like, like, they're going to be in this for the long haul. Like, at first, there were some kind of blips and there were some kind of problems, but, like, this just cements now that they're going to be, like, together forever. It cements it. So... After this moment, we just see that this house is to uh, be, like, supposedly cleaned out. Both Natalie and uh, Natalie and Kevin are freaking moving out. So, like, F this house. Like, they're giving it the finger as they're leaving. Because they're like, yeah, like, you guys almost died in this house. As, like, uh, Kevin and his, like, co-workers um are helping him move out and and also i guess that they had gotten a new dog which is like, like oh, okay like we can kind of see how like things started to like kind of improve after like this whole ordeal so eventually they all leave the home and they lock up and all of a sudden you just see this door all of a sudden closed supposedly by itself <laughs> excuse me and you just kind of wonder, oh, is there still a ghost in this house? Is there still another person that we are unaware of? Uh, so on and so forth. Concerning the very beginning of this tells us that it's based on true events. I'm like, was that just to try to get us to think that there's going to be another sequel to this? Uh, and like that this house just is going to continue to like... Like... I say true, like, true story, but it's based on true events. So events means that, uh, like, eventually a lot of this could be fabricated, but eventually, like, there's movies like 13 cameras and 14 cameras and 18 cameras, whatever the heck, that kind of feels just like this movie. Like, there's a lot of films out there that feel just like this film that... Like, I don't feel like this movie is, like, 100% breaking any new ground. But, like, I thought that the film was just interesting enough. I think they also kind of used, like, a little bit of, like, star power in this movie when eventually we're to go through it. It's like, oh, like, I know, uh, obviously I know, like, Sean Ashmore and I've seen like Ashley Green and certain projects and stuff like that. So like uh, kind of coming into this movie and kind of seeing the people I'm like, oh, OK, so they might have used like star power to maybe just kind of push this film. But anyways, yeah, um, there was something about this movie that just kind of gave me a headache or just left me in confusion where I'm just like, did I not watch this film? <laughs> like, that's what it kind of left for me, like. 
where uh where i was just kind of like i kept kind of missing these moments and all of a sudden i was just like okay now we're they're dealing with this now they're dealing with that now they're like it just kept going on and on like that and so it's just kind of like man there's just a lot going on in this movie and so like it just kind of got to the point where i'm sure that this review felt like jumbled all over the place but like there were so many moving parts in this movie to where like it was such a uh like a difficult thing to just go through and watch this movie because i'm like man like i'm sure a lot of people are gonna either uh like kind of feel like yeah this this feels like a jumbled mess <laughs> i'm sorry uh but yeah but like i could say there's something about this that like I wanted to like figure it out kind of thing. Like I was going with the ghost angle because like, I don't know. It seemed like all this stuff going on, like didn't seem like, especially the whole like part where uh, Natalie was to toss the ball and the ball is under the bed, but then all of a sudden like the ball appears on top of the bed. Like that whole thing made me think ghost. Where I was just like, okay, it can't be an actual person. Like, unless, like, the the person was already under the bed or in that room. Yeah, it just seemed just so weird to me. But, yeah. But with that said, uh, yeah, I'm trying to figure out if there's any last, like, sliver of information or anything that came from this movie. But I think that that's it. Uh, if anything, more than likely, this might be one of those where I might want to, like revisit it or something like because more than likely i can probably review this movie probably any number of different kinds of ways uh so like because i'll be like yeah i don't think i got everything out of this one <laughs> like i don't think i did or uh, talked about everything uh so with that said if there was any important moments that i completely obliviously forgot about or whichever um i i'm sorry but uh Oh, like, there was the the one part where kind of, like, Natalie was having her, like, fashion career in Jeopardy. Uh, and that was kind of an interesting moment where, like, Natalie's boss is kind of talking to her and saying, like, you know what, I, I can understand that you're probably, your life has, like, some setbacks. But it also felt like Natalie wasn't really doing her job. And so, like she was kind of contracted for things to need to have certain kind of like parts of her job being done. And, but Natalie is just like, well, my dog passed away and there's a lot of other like things going wrong. And like, it kind of gets to the point where people are starting to ask both Natalie and Kevin through this movie to like, do you guys need help? <laughs> like, like, man, like what is, what is going on with you guys? Um, but I don't know. I'm kind of interested to see like, what about this movie is actually true? Like, what, like, slivers of parts of this thing is overall true? Like, I want to try to figure that out. Like, were these people actual people? Like, were, like, like, did this really happen in someone's house? Like, how far of truth does this all go? Um, maybe there's something, maybe there's a book of this. I don't know. But anyways, I'm going to get out of here. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.